Rutland speaker and author and your host today on this very important program where we equip, we challenge, we empower the man to strengthen his family leadership so that together when we have those families that are well led, we can spur a movement of national transformation. Today we are focusing on the family leader's role as a father. In the previous programs, we have talked about the power of a well-led family. We have talked about how to lead a young family. And we also talked about uh, how you ensure that you become a family leader who is a strong, empowering trainer. Not just a mentor, not just a coach, not just a consultant, mm. but also a trainer. So today, we are focusing on the family leader as a father, we are putting a finger deeply on the concept of fatherhood as it relates with family leadership. And to take us through this conversation is none other than an amazing guest I have known for the last about one decade or so, a solid man who understands these things, who has been a family leader himself for a number of decades like he's about to tell us, and that is Dr. Dixon Oboya. Dr. Dixon, you're very welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I am doing very well, thank you. You're looking younger and younger every day. <laughs> How old are you now? Well, this year I'll be exactly 68. Exactly 68. Going. 68 in October, I will be 68. Amazing. Yeah. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. I take it. Years. I'm looking forward to great things. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, out of those 68 years, how many have you spent in marriage? Out of the 68 years, we've been married for 47 years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you can see that I started young. I started Family young. leader for 47 years. 47 Please, years. Please, tell us about yourself. Well, briefly. I am uh, the Africa representative mm -hmm. on the Global Prayer Council of Campus Crusade for Christ. In Uganda, it's known as Life Ministry Uganda. Mm. I have been in the leadership position for a long time. I served as a missionary in uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa mm -hmm. where we served for about 17 years before we returned to Uganda and I took on the responsibility of leading the ministry in Uganda until um, 2019 when I, it was necessary and I saw it fit to hand over to a younger man who is able to run faster and do those things that I believe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's consistent with what we are talking about. You yes. know, leadership doesn't end with any one person. Mm -hmm. It has to be perpetuated. Yes. So Passed on. Passed on. Yeah. So 2019, by the grace of God, I passed on the leadership to a very capable young man, David Wataba. Awesome. So that's awesome. where I come from. Yes. And, and let me just say, you know, you ask how many years. Mm. In these 47 years, God has been great and very graceful to us. Mm. God blessed us with six biological children and we adopted one to make seven. And now we have 10 grandchildren. Wow. When my children got married, I told them I want to see results <laughs> because leadership needs to be results. seen and the results are being seen there. Amazing. So I'm grateful for Amazing. that. Amazing. You're Thank really you. so welcome on this program. Thank you. And I can tell you that I'm feeling honored and privileged to have you today on set Thank as you. we talk about something that you have been doing yes. for 47 years. Yes, right. Leading a family. Thank you. 68 years of age, 47 years of marriage, six children, 10 grandchildren, and a wealth of experience. Thank you. Who would be the best person? Who would be a better person to handle the topic of today than the man in the studio right now? Amen. So this is a leadership program. That's right. Only that it focuses on mm -hmm. leading the family. Correct. So let's begin from right there. In your view, generally speaking, what is leadership? Beautiful. You know, leadership is one of those things that has been so widely discussed that mm -hmm. if you ask a thousand people, you'll probably get a thousand answers. A thousand definitions. <laughs> and yet, I think it should not be as confusing as we make it mm -hmm. happen. Uh, by the grace of God, I studied in my master's, mm. I did organizational leadership. Yes. Uh, in my doctorate, I have done transformational leadership. Yes. But that aside, I think the greatest place to study leadership 
is in the family. You think so? The family is the best school of leadership. Say it again. <laughs> I, 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 I think where I am, I owe it to the foundation that I saw in my father. Mm -hmm. When we are talking of leadership, it has something that, you know, you do not necessarily pick it from classroom. You don't. You don't pick it from classroom. We yes. thank God for classroom. We yes. can get certain things. Mm -hmm. But the practice, you're going to pick it from somewhere else. And that is in the family. So in other words, it's we could say that leadership is more caught than thought. Absolutely. You catch leadership vibes. <laughs> and once you have caught the leadership vibes, you are going to, to internalize it. Mm -hmm. And so if you catch the wrong vibes, yes. the game up for you. Yes. It will be the wrong vibes that you internalize mm -hmm. and it will be seen in the way that you are going to lead. And so yes. coming back to you know, what leadership what is, leadership is mm. I found it very useful in my study uh, in that when I was doing my masters, mm -hmm. I was looking at leadership particularly in Zimbabwe, yes. but cutting well, across. Zimbabwe I was time. in Zimbabwe at that mm -hmm. time. And so I thought, wait a minute. How is leadership defined in my cultural context? Mm -hmm. Because I am what my culture has made me to be. In many ways. In very many ways. Yes. Thank God for you know, the godliness that we get through being Christians. Mm -hmm. But it's my culture that has given me the picture mm -hmm. of leadership. Yes. So, as I look back, and I, I, I am an Acholi. I come from Acholi. One I'm, of the tribes in northern one Uganda. One of the tribes in northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. I look for, what is the word for a leader in Acholi? Mm -hmm. And I found the word for a leader in Acholi mm -hmm. is Latela. 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 L-A-T-E-L-A. Correct. Latela. Latela. Uh-huh. That is a leader. Yes. But I found in practice there was a, quite a bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. The word ladit was being used to refer to Latella. L A D I T. A -T yes. Ladit. Ladit. What would it mean in your ladit local language? Ladit in my local language, it implies, let me put it this way, the big person. Big man. The boss. <laughs> and, 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 and this, actually, when you begin to look at it, gives a very wrong perspective mm -hmm. as far as leadership is concerned. Yes. Because you can be Ladit without being Latela. Oh, you can be the so-called big person, yes. the boss of the place, yes. when you are not being the leader in no, the place. No, not at all. Ladit, Ladit not is not necessarily Latela. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can be Latella and Ladit. Okay. You can be Latella and Ladit. And I'm going to try to explain. You see, Latella comes from the word tell. Mm -hmm. Tell is pulling. Okay. So Latella is one who is pulling. Latella is the one pulling. Latella is the one pulling. And when we are talking of pulling, it has a sense of direction. Of course. And also it has a sense of movement. Because you are... You are pulling to cause something mm -hmm. to go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. And Latella has to be at the head. Yes. So wherever that pulling is taking place, yes. that is the head. Okay. So whoever is at the, at, at, at the, at the first place where the rope begins, if yes. you could use an example of a uh -huh. rope, the one who is pulling the rope, yes. that is the Latella. That is the Latella. And those who are pulling with him, those are the teammates. So they are the ones that could be seen as the followers of the followers. Uh -huh. And the idea is to get everyone going in that specific direction. Yes. And not only that, that we are all exerting effort in the same direction to make this movement smoother and this teller easier. So would we therefore say leadership is the ability to pull towards a certain direction helping other people in the process to move towards the same direction. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the ability to influence yes. others mm -hmm. to come alongside, mm -hmm. to pull towards a certain desired direction. Oh, yes. There has to be that desired direction. Mm -hmm. So 
I need to influence because if I don't influence the other pullers, yes, <laughs> they could be pulling the opposite direction. Absolutely. So Latella needs to exert the influence to persuade these people, mm. this person, yes. that this is the direction. So let's pull towards and, that direction. And that, that's the key thing. For me to exert that influence, I need to let this person know that actually that direction is in his interest. All right. It is, he's going to benefit by going yes, that yes. direction. All right. So then he brings his efforts along mm -hmm. instead of pulling it the other way, the right, awesome. opposite direction. Awesome. Let's now yeah. put it in the family context. Yes. Therefore, what is the family leadership? The family leadership is both the ability, mm. the character, yes. and the competence mm -hmm. necessary mm -hmm. to move the family mm. to a desired direction that God has ordained the family for. Amazing. So there is God's in thing in there. Yes. So here you need to use your influence, uh, your, your, the person at the pulling at and the helm of pulling. Yes. Yes. Must exert his influence mm -hmm. using his character, his ability, his ability, and his competence. And exactly. I'm taking notes seriously. Thank you. I'm Thank here you. to learn. Today. It, it is important <laughs> because if you don't use character, is important mm. in that leadership, okay. the family leadership, the key things, the foundation of fatherhood mm -hmm. is character. Okay. If a father doesn't have the character, mm. but he may have the competence, mm. that father can cause severe problem for the family because you are going to produce indiscipline sons and daughters yes. who have no character. You are going to produce ladits who are not ladits. <laughs> <laughs> and now, this program is about family leadership yes. at the core. That's right. And today, we are focusing on that family leader being a father. Yes. So, very briefly, what, who is a father? Who is a it father? It sounds like a redundant question, but let me ask it. You know, who it, is a father? It, it, it's a great question because if there is any one thing that has been greatly abused, mm. it is fatherhood. Mm -hmm. Let me bring it from this perspective. To be a man is not automatic. Okay. To be a male is automatic. You are born huh. a male. In other words, to be a male is by chance. Is, uh, to be a man, man is by choice. By choice. You're going to have to work <laughs> at it. You, are, you just don't wake up and I'm a man. No, 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 no. Let's not confuse those things. You are a male. You can be 100 years old, you are a male. Because to be a man, there is a difference. It's by birth, basically. It, you are going to be a man because... Now, let, let me step back. In certain cultures, yes. and that leads me to the fatherhood, mm. you are born a male. Yeah. You grow up into adolescent. Mm -hmm. You become a teenager. Yes, you become a youth. And you become a youth. At that point in time, this youth begins to think, I think I now qualify <laughs> to be a man. To be a man. <laughs> and if that is going to be to happen, again, let me take you to my culture. Yes. Three things are absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. That is what will qualify you to say you are a man. Mm. And from manhood now you can become a father. Mm. You don't become a father just because you are a male. And that's my problem with our current scenario. Yes. Many males, because they have the reproductive system yes. to bring forth children, they think they are men. They are not. And so, in that Do culture... you know that you are inciting violence right now? <laughs> <laughs> because the way you are shaking tables, I don't know where this is going. So, the father. Who is the father, yes. really? So, I, I'm bringing this. Yes. This boy now is a youth. And yes. he wants to be a father. Yes. The three things are absolutely necessary for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. One, you must have your own shelter. You mm. can no longer sleep under the same roof with, yes. your, with your dad, biological father or whoever, with your guardian or whoever may be. Yes. You can no longer sleep because mm -hmm. you said, I want to be a man. Okay, two. So you must have that. Number two, you need to have 
your own granary. Okay. That's the storage for your food. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You need to have that. Number three, you must have your own garden. Okay. These three things were absolute essential before you can even open your mouth and say, I have seen someone that I think I want to bring home. I, I see three things in those. Yes. I see housing. Yes. I see saving. Yes. I see income. Correct. Source of income. That is exactly what it was. It said you cannot qualify to be a man when this is you know you're still living under your father's roof mm -hmm. you don't have that source of income you have nothing sustainable and you want to bring somebody's daughter and say your wife where are you going to put that lady <laughs> no no you are scaring the singles from marrying <laughs> and now you yes. see as you talk about this yes. the you know housing savings source of income trusted source of income yes. if i can yes. add that yes. word yes it brings us to the realization that many men are actually struggling. That's right. They are struggling with many of these things. And I don't know what have you observed as some of the struggles that a number of family leaders go through as they attempt to lead their families in the role of a father. What are some of the struggles you have observed? I think, let me probably mention one, one, one thing that I've seen very strongly indeed mm. the challenge that family leaders have mm. is whether they should be continuing to and i'm going to come to this mm -hmm. whether we should continue fathering and mothering our children mm. or to mentor them okay because if you don't if you don't stop at a certain point at a point in time my son i'm, I'm 68 mm -hmm. i have sons who have now married and they are, i can no longer train them mm -hmm. i can mentor them okay but before before that i said father i had a responsibility yes. to train them to mm -hmm. disciple them mm -hmm. so that they can become the men that God would want them to be. Okay. Now, the biggest challenge today is that has collapse. Okay. We do not have time to mentor our children. And from my angle, from where I am, yes. I see training as teaching a skill or a behavior. Yes. I see mentoring as sharing experience as a senior trusted advisor. Right? That is it. Okay. That is it. That is what is missing. That's what is missing because we've come to that place where what we want to do or what we are seeing happening is there is an overemphasis on mm. the man being the provider. Mm. <laughs> so, and there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely. And that's right. The man mm. needs to be the provider. Mm -hmm. However, again, I put a word of caution here. Yes. The provider is not just a provider of material mm -hmm. things. Yes. The man needs to provide the security. Mm -hmm. The man needs to provide the emotional comfort. Mm -hmm. The man needs to provide the spiritual foundation. Mm. The man needs to provide even the physical protection. So mm -hmm. all of this. So when we are talking about man even being provide the provider. The appearance uh, uh, availability. Yes. It's not just getting money and put on the table, I am the provider and you are gone. No, 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 no. That's part of the challenge you're asking me. Yes. That's part of the problem today we are seeing because we think that once I brought money home, mm -hmm. there's sugar in the house, there's yes. milk in the house, yes. the, you know, all those basic things are there, I'm free. What else do they no. want? What else do they what want? What haven't I given this woman? <laughs> What do these children you need? You see, what do these children yes. need? And so you don't even know your children. Yes. You've talked of that training, the training aspect. There's a point when that the skills, if you have not been spending time with your children, mm -hmm. what skills will you have passed to them? The skill of being unavoidable. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, Ex that is exactly what they will do yes. because they they see how daddy has perfected his unavailability yes and those children will be twice worse than you the art of absence the absolute absence they know how to perfect it so it is important that we make sure that we do the training at yes. that critical age so that at a point in time we are now mentoring them mm -hmm. we because 
I, as the father, have been someplace that these children have not been. So I am sharing my experience. I'm telling them fire burns. Yes. Because fire burns. My child doesn't need to put his hand in fire mm. to say, well, let me see if daddy is right. Yeah. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be that mm -hmm. way. So this, I find, is one of our biggest problems yes. today yes. in the f giving leadership to the that. family as fathers. I see that. And it's there. a big struggle indeed. It's a big struggle. We had this kind of conversation today on, on some platform mm. that was relating with the, the way we, we either train or don't train our children, mm -hmm. whether they should work, whether they shouldn't work, whether they should just sit there and the house helps, the maids, the, those house assistants be the ones to do the work or not, mm. and so on and so forth. And you realize that fathers, even together with mothers, are struggling on the aspect of when do we stop which role and swing into the next role where does this role stop mm -hmm. you know when am i a nurturer mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. does nurturing stop mm -hmm. and i start training mm -hmm. where does training stop and i start mentoring yes. where does and so on and so forth so this is key mm -hmm. and of course also you've talked about the struggle of provision to provide uh, multi-dimensional things yes you know yes emotional yes. Uh -huh. provision uh, spiritual provision yes. Yes. physical provision and also struggling with the issue of spending time yes what is in my mind now is could these actually be the reasons why most fathers find it difficult find it hard close to impossible to freely relate with the members of their own family you know you you have hit the nail on the head many of us fathers today mm -hmm. we don't know our family we think we do but we don't no we know them we can list the names <laughs> We can mention the names. <laughs> we know them. Let me give you a real <laughs> good example. And I'm, this is my personal example. Yes. So many years ago, my son was in senior two. Mm -hmm. Our last one was in senior two. Mm -hmm. And he, he wanted a, a pair of trousers. Of course, senior two is still under my roof. Of and course. I am responsible for, for providing what I think is necessary. Mm. And we agreed it was necessary for him. He wanted that and it was a good trouser. Mm. So we went to the shop to buy this trouser. Mm -hmm. So after he picked the trouser, I looked at my son and I told him, Sonny, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay for that trouser. Put that trouser back. I'm not paying for that trouser. Put it back. But daddy, this is the one I want. <laughs> this is the one I want. I said, put it back. He said, now, which one do you want? I said, I'll get, I will not pay for a trouser that is going to hang below your buttocks. Yes. I am not going to pay for that. If you want to buy that yourself, you buy, but you don't put it also in my house. Mm -hmm. So my son <laughs> then said, okay, daddy, get, get the, the, the trouser that you. So I went and picked a trouser. So he had the one he, he, he had picked and the one that now I picked. Yes. And he said, go and put that. Go and try it. He went into the dressing room, put on the trouser, came out. It was looking cute. It was mm -hmm. good. And he said, Daddy, how does this? I said, fantastic. And then he threw the one that he had in his hand. He said, Daddy, this is the one you, bought, you brought. Yes. I was shocked. I realized that I knew, but I didn't know. Amazing. It was a very so graphic That's for somebody lesson. watching not to miss this. Yes. If I got it right. Yes. Are you saying the trouser that he had actually chosen for himself, when he put it on, you said that's amazing. Thinking it was the one you had chosen for Exactly. <laughs> that's why I said, it's, there's a tragedy going on, playing in, on in our homes. Yes. Fathers who do not know their children. That was a graphic lesson for me. And I said to myself, now nah, you better know your children. Yes. Know your children. What phase of life are they in? Mm. What do they need? Yes. Who are their friends? Mm -hmm. My friend, that was a lesson. And it changed things <laughs> for me to deliberately begin to invest because I knew that if I don't invest time in my children, yes. somebody else will. Of course. And you don't know who that will be. That is a they will be investing their time into your children doing. Yes. Yes. 
And this brings us to the, maybe before we take a break, we could, you could share with us if there are some books I have read here and there, and one of them is by Stephen Covey, and it's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Let me borrow that language. Yes. If we were going to say this is a highly effective father, what would be the parameters that we would have to look at? Wow, that is a good one. That's a good one. On top of that list, an effective father must be a God-fearing father. On top of the list, God-fearing God father. God-fearing. Because we take our fatherhood from God. <clears throat> Our fatherhood we take from God. If I am not God-fearing, forget it, everything collapses. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two? Number two, an effective father knows his family intimately. Mm -hmm. Knowledge of the family intimately. Mm -hmm. And you can never know your family intimately without spending considerable time with them. Let me say this. Let me say this, dear listeners. I hear a lot of time when people talk of quality time. Yes. But I want to say to you, what is important to you, you will even put quantity in it. Wow. Wow. If it is important to you, you will put quantity into it. If something <coughs> is a priority to you, you yes. it will not only find money in your pocket, pocket, it will also find time in your schedule. Absolutely. How important are your children? Because we are talking of fatherhood. Yeah. We are talking of fatherhood. And fatherhood speaks of these people in your family. Yes. How much time are you investing? And I use that word investing very Not sacrificing. Deliberately. Not sacrificing. <laughs> Fathers, listen to me. You don't sacrifice. You invest yes. every second, every minute you spend with your children, with your wife, is an investment of eternal consequences. If we do not see that time with our children, with our spouses, as an investment, we've lost it. We've lost it. We've lost it. So number one, God-fearing. Yes. Parameter number two, intimate knowledge of the family that yes. is acquired through spending considerable Group. time with that, them as right. an investment with eternal consequences. Yes. And the number three. Number three, for me, an effective father is a father who is able to provide, the, you know, we talk of those multidimensional needs of yes. the family mm -hmm. according to the phase of life of the family members. According and that for phase. me is very important according to the phase of life of the family members. Mm -hmm. If my son, my eldest son, Alex Mugabe, mm. is, you know, the eldest and his, his requirement or his needs mm. will not be the same as that of Philip, who is the youngest. You say that's uh, the, the eldest. How old is he? Alex is 75, 1975. 1975. Born in 1975. Those are so do you? Yeah. I, I will calculate later. Let's you continue. do that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what phase of life is Alex in? Yes. So as, as a father, I need to know what would I provide for him at this phase of yes. life. Yes. So you are relevant in the provision. Absolutely. Yes. You know, it, 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 sometimes we, we, we just... Oh, it's a birthday, or it's this. Mm. And we, we kind of celebrate things one size fits all. Yes. It's always buying a pair of socks <laughs> and a tie. And send. <laughs> so that's the challenge. Those are, the, I think for me, those three yes. are very critical parameters for effective fatherhood. Wow. God-fearing person, intimate knowledge of the family, and somebody who provides the multidimensional needs yes. of the family yes. according to the face That's of right. the family member. That's correct. So in view of this, when you consider most of our professional corporate men mm -hmm. who are very busy trying to, 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 to build the nation in the workplace, whether it's in a bank or in a government, private practice, etc., when you look at this and you look at how busy they are, how, how possible is it for them to be this kind of a person to find time? Because they are busy building the nation. So how, how possible is it for them to actually do these things? Let, let me just tell you, for listeners, the first nation you build is your family. If you think you are busy building the nation there, you are, you are wrong. You, you are failing in the family <laughs> is the worst failures. 
success at work can never be a substitute for failure at home. Wow. Okay. Success at work can never be a substitute for failure in your home. No. That no. is so profound. Because, listen, you and I know very well, whether you are the CEO like my yes, brother is yes, the CEO, yes, yes. that company mm. has some other people. Mm. Tomorrow, if for some reason, God forbid, my is God. not available, yes. is gone, somebody, in fact, <laughs> Immediately. Let, 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 let's, let's use this word. And I say it carefully with all due respect. Yes. Before Lanya was buried, they needed a, a speaker. Exactly. Think about it. Think about it. Olanya is the, the late speaker oh, of the parliament, parliament of Uganda. Yes. Yes. Think about that. So, if we think that success at work is the thing, you are in for a rude shock. Wow. Because your failure at home means failure everywhere. In the eyes of God and in the eyes of people. Yeah. Listen, people will say, hmm, look at that one. Yeah. Look at his children. Yeah. Look at his wife. Yes. Friends, your first line of investment is your family. Your first line of investment. And I go back to what I said. Though. If it is important to you. You will find a time yeah. for it. You would find time so, for it. So, professionals, executive, wherever you are, do not trade your family for corporate success. Oh my, oh my. Do not make your children orphans when you are still alive. Do not make your wife a widow when you are still alive. Just like John Maxwell says, if your leadership fails at home, don't export it anywhere else. <laughs> we are taking a break, and when we come back, we delve even deeper into these matters. This is the Inspired Family Leader. This is how we play. Play with power. This is how we do it. How we put a team together. This is how we pass on greatness. Because with this team to inspire us, there's nothing we can't do. Go for goals and win. Buy a Pepsi glass bottle or Pepsi Max 330ml. Check another crown and win soda, TVs, caps, t-shirts and cash. Redeem prizes at any Pepsi depot or truck countrywide. Terms and conditions apply. Pepsi, for the love of it. Do you know that you can now enjoy great enriching shows anywhere through the Family TV app? Here is how to download it. Open Play Store on your phone. Search for the Family TV app. Click Install. After installing it, open it and enjoy enriching content anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Family TV, enriching lives. Chinna yuchi nyumira. Wena chizikatogo, chikomando, Rolex majasa tu nyanyi ambisi. Man, wherever I am, I enjoy chinna yu with your TV channels on my phone. Nyumiro mrembo mpya ogujju debisa nyusa ogulye mikutuja TV ejisu kama chinana neja radio nga kuta dene zi filmu ngo sinzi ilira wanda wali gena mo app store oteke app ya yu TV channels kusimu yo oru nyumiro ena kwa satu ngora bida wedele e watari koze sa data Yo TV channels, the power is in your hands Welcome to Coffee Production Tips brought to you by Uganda Coffee Development Authority Uganda Coffee Development Authority is the government agency mandated to promote and oversee the coffee industry as a whole by developing research, facilitating coffee production and productivity, by training farmers on good agricultural practices, controlling the quality and improving the marketing of coffee for the benefit of stakeholders, planting coffee seedlings, mulching, training coffee seedlings, and stamping coffee. Farmers are encouraged to adopt good agricultural practices to get high yields, good prices and better income from coffee. These tips are brought to you by Uganda Coffee Development Authority. Men, who are you? What do you seek to achieve in your personal life? By the way, when did you become a man? And if we talked with your wife, what would she say about you? And when your children look at you, 
what do they see? Do you know what makes you tick? What makes you unique? What makes you basically you? Are you living a life of impact? Are you living a life of influence? Are you living a life of significance? Introducing to you the inspired family leader, an interactive, provocative, and inspiring show that is going to challenge, that is going to equip, that is going to encourage men to strengthen their family leadership for national transformation. The inspired family leader with Samuel A. Bakutana every Saturday, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. East African time here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Live, love, and lead. Are you a latera or you are a ladit? <laughs> This has been quite an interesting conversation yeah. as we talk about the family yeah. leader as a father, yeah. in the role of a father. Yeah. And when we took a break, you, you, you had just made powerful statements. Things like the first nation you build is your own family. Things like success in your work cannot be a substitute for failure in your home. If your leadership fails in your own home, do not export it anywhere else. Now, as we take on the last lap of our program today, you realize that we are in a world where there are very many voices that are talking about children's <coughs> rights, children's yeah. rights, children's rights. And indeed, children have rights. Here is the challenge. We are talking of children's rights without talking about parents' rights. So in your view, how can a family leader, how can a man offer firm leadership without getting into the trouble with the civil authorities that are enforcing children's rights? Briefly. Thank you. I, I think if you recall right from the beginning, one of the things that I said clearly was the man must be a godly man. Godliness. Mm -hmm. Because once godliness is there, before we talk of children's right, before we talk of the women's right, mm. before we talk of the men's right, mm. where is God's right? Hey, God also has rights. Where you, is you, God's you, you right? You want people to be on a strike with God's <laughs> rights, God's <laughs> rights. <laughs> because once we have established that the author of the family is God, yes. and he knows exactly who needs what. Mm -hmm. And once, listen, our family our bringing up children, our building our family must not be a legislative affair. Okay. It must be something I am doing out of the fullness of my heart. Okay. I love my family enough to ensure that my family is brought up in the fear of God. But and you the see, fear. that's on assumption yes. that I have that fear, that I know what to do, that I am a responsible man. You, Dr. Dixon, you yes. are talking about a very responsible man, someone who even is in faith centers, raising holy hands, yes. shouting hallelujah. But there is this very man who is irresponsible, who left his wife, who is not looking after his children, and you're saying that one doesn't need to be held legislatively? No. This is, this is the point I'm trying to bring. It's important. You know, there's a thought had come to my mind. I said, if a father does something that yes. is criminal, mm -hmm. anything that is criminal, yeah. The law must take its course. All right. I thought you were saying totally no legislation. The law must take its course. Okay. However, we must also be very careful that before the law, there is the heart. All right. Before the law, there is the heart. Mm -hmm. It is important for us to find why is this man struggling in this area? Yes. Because, listen, throwing people in jail will not change their hearts. Say that again. Throwing people in jail won't we'll change, change their, their hearts. hearts. If you put a thief away from what he could possibly steal, mm -hmm. he will steal nothing. Mm -hmm. He will be a good man. When he's but back? When you put him back, 
the fall, it doesn't take 24 hours before he's back to his trade. Listen, let us not use chameleon tactic mm -hmm. for bring up our children. Yes. The chameleon will camouflage mm -hmm. to do certain things. Are you insinuating that the camouflaging, the chameleon tactic is elevating the, the children's rights that is without, like, because I want us to be direct <laughs> that's right. I want us to be direct <laughs> and brief on this <laughs> yes you know? yes mm. the chameleon tactic is what is actually causing this problem mm. we we the let, let me put go back a little bit mm -hmm. scripture for, for those of us who are Christian yes. the Bible says very clearly mm -hmm. do not provoke your children unto wrath the Bible doesn't say don't discipline your children. Okay. When I'm disciplining my child, if my child makes me angry, mm. first let me sort out my anger before I discipline. That's important. The problem is many of us in violating the children's right, yes. we come with the anger, sometimes even anger that has nothing to do with the family. Oh, so instead of sorting out our anger, anger we sort out the child. Which <laughs> That, that's part of the problem. Mm. So the children become victims of our failures okay. to resolve or deal with okay. our internal problem. Okay. So when this situation prevails, I think the law is right in taking its course. All right. We cannot and must not take cover under, well, the Bible <laughs> say or this say. No, 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 no. Criminal is criminal. Yes. Yeah. So in other words, what I'm hearing is if a man is not leading the family well and violating the the basic god-given rights yes. of a child yes he needs to be brought to book that's right but then we should also not only emphasize the child's rights without remembering the parents rights right. and also the ultimate rights of the creator of that's the two. right that's right great and you see this is not the <laughs> only trouble that the men often find themselves in here is the second one yes what do you advise a man, a family leader, who is facing a challenge of the wife ganging up with the children to deal with him negatively? <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I think when that situation arises, mm. you know clearly that the family governance has collapsed. This, this, the government is, is, there is a coup d'etat. There is a coup. There is a coup in the making. That the, the leadership, the headship of the family is being overthrown. Mm -hmm. And we need to find out what is it that led to the coup. Mm -hmm. We had said earlier on, you find that I am not available. Mm -hmm. All I do is send the border guys with the money, yeah. with the food, and listen. That is not what the family needs. Mm -hmm. Husbands, I want you to know. Fathers, I want you to know. The family needs you personally, your physical presence, before they need your money. In other words, they need your presence much more than they need your presence. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you for putting it that way. We seem to be in the habit of bribing. <laughs> when you talk of corruption, corruption begins in the family. Bribing the family to cover our failures. Bribing, bribing your children with sweets. Exactly. To be on the cartoons <laughs> watching before. So that is a problem. When that situation arises, it is important for us to cool down mm -hmm. and check out where mm -hmm. have I blown it. Yeah. Before we blame this woman doesn't mm -hmm. listen to me, mm -hmm. these children, no. Listen, as a husband, as a father, you are responsible for doing this. Mm. You are responsible for creating a safe environment. Safe yeah. environment at home. You are responsible. Mm -hmm. So if a coup arises, it means you fail to create that safe environment. <laughs> and that safe environment means an environment which is secure. Mm -hmm. Everyone feels secure mm -hmm. in the family. Yes. The wife feels secure, the children feel secure, the dogs feel secure. Yeah. Everybody that is part and everything that's part yes. of the family feels secure. Apart from the rat. Ap it should <laughs> that not be secure if it enters. <laughs> the second thing is in creating that safe environment, there must be an environment of friendliness. Mm -hmm. Again, as the father, you are the aide 
you are the prime minister, you are the head of government. Mm. You create that. Mm -hmm. You create the environment of friendliness. Make your children your friend. Make your wife your friend. Before you make your children your friend, make sure your wife is your friend. Mm. Many times we try to hijack and make children on our side yeah. and begin to rule, divide and rule the family. Mm. It's evil. It's wrong. Oof. Those are tough words. That's wrong. Those are tough words. I uh, said without uh, repentance. I, I know. <laughs> I, I, and I know you. I, and I knew that would happen on this program today. <laughs> it was long coming. Now, you see, we are talking about the family leader as a father. Yes. And w I think we can't talk about fatherhood without referring to motherhood. No. So, briefly, what, what would you say to a mother who is watching? Ah, to a mother who is watching. As I say to the father, the best gift you can give to your children is loving their mother. Mm -hmm. The best gift any man can give to the children is loving their mother. Mm -hmm. To the mother, that man, mm. that man, the greatest need he has is you. Wow. That man needs you. Mm -hmm. Give yourself to that man unreservedly. Mm -hmm. Because when you give yourself to that man unreservedly, you open avenue for those pillow talks that will have to resolve things that you perhaps think this is not good enough. Mm. If you don't, then a man will see everything as an attack. Yes. Give yourself. That Your man, man needs you. I hear you. Amazing. So while the greatest need of the children is their father's love for their mother, yes. the greatest need for the man is his, woman, is his woman, is his wife. That's right. Briefly, let me put you on spot a little bit. Yes, right. Let's get a little personal. What are some of the memories you have of your own father in relationship to all these things we've talked about? So wow, far? wow. That's good. By the way, my father today is a little over 100, he's 106. Are you and saying he's, still, he's alive. still alive? He's still alive. Oh my. And he still walks around. He, he, he has crutches because yes. he suffered stroke after my mom died. So sorry. Okay. But here's the greatest thing that I, some of the things that I've learned from my mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. In my life, from my childhood, I never, never saw my father exchange word with my mother. Never. You never saw them having a heated never. argument? If they had any heated argument, which I think they had, yeah. they kept it away from us as children. Mm. They respected the privacy of the children mm -hmm. and they kept to themselves. And when they came out, there was always good face. Mm -hmm. For me, that's one thing. My father respected my mother. Yes. And his respect was revealed in the way he cared for her. Wow. That are some, those are some of the things that I have mm. seen in him mm. that I pray that God would allow me to be that to my wife. Yes. To respect her, mm -hmm. to care for her, mm -hmm. to be available for her. Mm -hmm. My father was available to my mother. Even at the time when my mother was so sick, my father was there. Yes. My father was there. Wow. So, ah, so there father, are some good men out there. There are. There, there are, are some good men out there. I, I, I <coughs> sometimes hear some, some women say, ah, all men are the same. They, they are just, uh, uh, and I'm saying, uh, why did you have to taste all of them? Otherwise, how did you know they are the same? same? You know? <laughs> right. So your dad, awesome stuff. Yes. Maybe still putting you on the spot. Yes, right. Knowing what you now know. These are now 47 years down the road <coughs> as a father, <coughs> as a husband. If you were to rewind and go back to maybe, maybe uh, day, day 300, maybe when you had your firstborn mm -hmm. as a father of a young baby, mm. what are some of the things you would do differently, given what you now know as a father, in the role of fatherhood? Yes, in the role of fatherhood, let me just step back very quickly. Yes. The early days of our marriage was tough mm. and rocky. Mm. Because for me, I was a typical 
<laughs> what would I? I, I don't want to. You, you were in exactly, a ditch. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the did can we do what he wants, how he wants, when he wants. Mm. And that was my life. Mm. I started very badly. Wow. So if I were to rewind, I would say from day one, from day one, I would ensure that number one, mm -hmm. my wife would be my priority. Mm -hmm. So that my children would know that their mother is my priority. Yes. Not the children. Mm. The children are not priority. The wife, my wife, is number one priority. Mm. The children follow. Mm -hmm. Because if it goes well with my wife, it will go well with the with children. children. But it can go well with the children and everything is disintegrating Great. concerning your wife. That's right. So you would change that. I would change that. Mm -hmm. Number two, I would be very deliberate in cultivating a very close relationship with every child where they are. Mm -hmm. Not seeing the children as, as a, a lump, a group. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Every child deserves special and specific attention yes i would do that wow i know i did that in later life mm. but if i were to rewind the clock that's what i would do yeah and that would be my message wow every child that god gives you is special and deserves special attention look at them as unique individuals even Don't if they are twins yes even if they are twins by the grace of god god gave us twin girls but they are still individuals. Mm. They have individual needs. Absolutely. They are unique. They are. They have their unique purposes on earth. Amazing. Wow. Wife being a priority and having a close relationship with every child as an individual and not lumping wow. them up together as a group. That's right. So I hear the order of priorities coming out as four Ps. <laughs> Number one, you are a person, so give your relationship with the one who made you a person priority. Number two, you are a partner. Give your re relationship with your wife priority. priority. Number three, you are a parent. Give time and attention to your children, each one of them as individuals. That's right. Then number four, you can be the professional, go out there Thank you. and do the work. Absolutely. <laughs> go and do the work. You said something as we almost come to the close of this conversation. Mm -hmm. You said, I started badly. But when I look at you now, I don't think we could say you have continued badly. <laughs> <laughs> Many positive things are happening in your life as a father, as, as a husband, as a community leader, as a responsible citizen. And that takes me to the question, if there is a man who is watching, who never had a good role model in his father, mm -hmm. is there a possibility for him now becoming a great and highly effective father? Let me say from a Christian perspective, with God, all things are possible. And therefore, it doesn't matter how far you have fallen. Do not remain where you fell. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. There is hope. You've and that hope comes. There are men who are doing it right. Mm -hmm. Let's not say there is no one. There are of those. Of course. Ones. Of course. Make every effort to find this one person hmm. to work with you wow every man needs another man let me repeat myself every man mm -hmm. needs another man mm -hmm. preferably even two if you have two men the better mm -hmm. to lift up your hands mm -hmm. the picture that comes into my mind is the story of moses mm. on the mountain mm. he had aaron and he had Ur to lift up his hand Friends, it is important that yes. we are people that would help us mm -hmm. in this work. Yeah. So then it doesn't matter where you have fallen, yes. you can still get it. It doesn't matter how you started, yes. it matters how you would end. Yeah. You may not have come okay. from a good family, yes, right. but it is incumbent upon you to let a good family come out of you. Yes. You may not have had an amazing, awesome father who was a great role model of fatherhood, yes. but it is incumbent upon you to ensure that your children have a better father to look mm -hmm. up to as a great role model. Yes. It doesn't matter how tall 
old your grandfather was mm -hmm. now you, you you must do your own growing up you, you want you you want based on his own height mm. and it's not about what your father or your grandfather did not do it's about what your grandchildren will say about you right. and so as we close yes lawyers go to law school doctors go to the medical school where do fathers go to to learn these things a man who is watching from today onwards where can he go to to learn how to be a better father i think for me that is the simplest of all the questions is that asked. so i thought it was the toughest because anyway. because <laughs> there is the author of family and he has not hidden himself from us mm -hmm. every equipment every machine comes with a manual the user's manual. The user's manual. Manufacturer's manual. It is important that you study that manual before you operate your machine. Mm -hmm. Being a father is authored by God. God has provided for us what it takes to be an effective father. Mm. There is no two way about it. It is God's way or no way. Fatherhood has to be God's way. Effective fatherhood has to be God's way. Friends, listeners, you can choose your way. Mm -hmm. But again, that same Bible tells us there is a way that seems right to a man. Yes. But in the end, it goes nowhere. Yeah. It's a dead end. Yeah. If we want to be effective fathers, let's go to the manual. God has provided us okay. what it takes to be effective father that will be transforming not just his family but the community and even beyond and that insights that invokes that pulls out of me a very key question that i thought i was not going to ask <clears throat> yes. practically speaking there are many men who always go to places of worship lift the so-called holy hands but they are horrible fathers at home there are other men who don't know the color of a church, who have less to do with matters of faith, but they look like they are doing very many right things as far as raising up their own children. How do we reconcile this? Wow, that's a good question. Number one, in the heart of every man, no matter how degenerate we are, yes. there is a hunger and a desire to do what is right. Even these criminals, we shut them up in prisons. Mm -hmm. There is a place, there is a place in their hearts, the desire to do what is right. Mm -hmm. And so if we find out there, this guy who doesn't know anything about church, doesn't he, but he's doing it right, it's because there is the unwritten moral code on his heart wow. that God has put there. I get you. And it is important that we obey. Right is right. There is no shade of right. Mm -hmm. this, it, there can never be, this is more right than the other. No. <laughs> it is either right or wrong. Yes. And what is right, God has impressed. In fact, for some of us who have read the scripture, when you go to the book of Romans, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. It tells you what we need to know about God, God has made known to us. Okay. So, what we need to know about doing the right thing, God it's has done. It hearts. is within our heart. So now this man who is doing it right, even when he doesn't go to the places of worship, yes. there is a moral the, code, an ethical roadmap that right. is written and engraved on the stone tablets of his heart. Yes. But then this other gentleman who is always going there is having the roadmap but not maximizing it. He, he is not even it, using so it. it is. He's not even using it. Look straight into that <laughs> camera yes. and encourage a man who is watching give them your parting shots dear friends i'm addressing you as a man and as a father it is important for us to raise a generation that will walk in a way that you will be proud of them i want to be proud of my children but for me to do that i've got to do what it takes what have you got in mind concerning your family? Okay. It's God's desire that as a father, you lead your family to the destiny that he has designed.
for the family. Mm. God has not designed evil or anything bad. It is us who abandon it. I want to encourage you. Perhaps you are struggling and asking, how do I? How do I? Friends, I've already mentioned earlier, look for someone who is doing it right mm. and ask that person, could you please walk? Let us not allow pride to prevent us from seeing that we are heading towards a cliff. All right. And I thank God for a program like this. Maybe through this program, and I see the contact numbers on the screen, you can actually call and say, I need help. The worst thing that men we do is to think that we don't need help. I can do it. I can make it. I'm a man. That you will die. All right. That's my Awesome. Find a man that can walk with you. And if they can be two, even the better. Remember, success in your workplace will not be a substitute for failure in your own family. Let's go and build our families. Let's go and strengthen our family leadership as men. Who knows? One family at a time, we will build nations. Yes. We will transform continents, yes. beginning with our own homes. May our leadership not fail in our own homes. The inspired family leader with Samuel Eber Kutana. Until next time.